The Crypto Markets Update is presented by Grayscale, the world's largest digital currency asset manager. Time for a live look at Bitcoin. The Coindesk Bitcoin Price XVX Index currently trading at 37209 Bitcoin not doing much, down about just over 1% over the past 24 hours. And the Coindesk Ether Price ETX Index right now at 2458 ETH is also down about 4% over the past 24 hours. And joining us now to discuss the crypto markets is Joel Edgerton, a COO and board member of Bitflyer USA, the US arm of Japan-based crypto Exchange Bitflyer. Welcome to the show, Joel. Thanks for having me. Would love, great to have you. Would love to hear, you know, what, what's going on with Bitcoin? It seems to be trading sideways. Are we going to see a breakout? There's a lot going on underneath the hood with Bitcoin, but uh, is it a buying opportunity or not? You know, um, I think the, the main thing about Bitcoin is people need to remember that it's, it's a global story. It's not an Elon story. It's not a U.S. story. It's a global story. So you've got um, El Salvador news. You've got other eight, uh, Latin American countries interested. You had what you saw in the previous um, uh, package where, you know, they're, they're starting to have real use cases and, and it's starting to be really used. And that's really what's important. And one of the things that we're trying to do at Bitflyer is to make it more available, to make it more global. So you know, Bitflyer is, you know, uh, the only That's right. license you're, exchange you're giving, everywhere. You're giving U.S. clients access to cross-border trading by allowing them to trade Bitcoin and Japanese yen pairs. Does this, uh, tell me a bit about this. Does it run a how, does it run afoul with regulations or how, how comfortable are countries with this? Um, it doesn't run afoul with regulations. Uh, we spent a lot of time and a lot of uh, legal fees to, to make sure that it was okay. Um, so, you know, we're licensed in Japan, which is quite conservative with very strict laws. We're licensed in the U.S. We're licensed in uh, Europe. And we allow both our European clients and our American clients to access that, that Japanese board. Um, so uh, I think the, the important thing is um, we have to keep in mind that Bitcoin is global. So a Bitcoin in the U.S. and a Bitcoin in Japan is the same. But the, the characteristics of the markets that people trade on are not. You see differences in prices. Um, so, for example, the Japanese market is 50%, 55% retail, um, rather in the U.S., which is more institutionally driven. So there's different behaviors and the different mindset. And I think one of the things sure. you guys talked about earlier about, you know, inflation and everything in the U.S. and why there's no reaction. Okay, inflation in the U.S. may become more of an issue, but... Japan has been doing negative interest rates for, what, 20, 25 years now, and they don't see inflation. So they are part of the, the market that sets that price, and they don't care about inflation, right? But so Joel, there are different yeah. markets. Different things. Joel, the, the Bitcoin-Yen uh, pair, it's only on, on at least the exchanges, it's less than 5%. Uh, currently, I mean, it used to be there was a time when it was multiples of that when it came to Bitcoin trading volume. So, why why does it why this pair now? Why go through the the hassles uh, of, of going through this? And isn't that kind of like why? Isn't that sort of the situation that you, what you're just describing? The fact is that m much of Bitcoin is denominated and traded in against the U.S. dollar. So, I mean, is a, is the view to that? somehow the, the Bitcoin yen pair will, will skyrocket as a percentage of transaction? I, I don't think it, it's, a, it's a matter of whether it'll skyrocket as far as transactions. I, I think the point here is access, right? To give people a choice, to give people access. Right now, uh, if I remember correctly, something like 80% of all Bitcoin is denominated in, in US dollar. Um, and 80% of the world economy is not the US. Right. So I think we need to keep in mind that there is uh, there are other countries, there are other opportunities and there are other people that we need to bring into this um, and to allow U.S. customers and European customers to get into that Japanese market, um, I think, is part of that. But it's not the only way. We don't stop there. Um, we are going to be looking at other pairs. We're going to be looking about bringing the, the, the Japanese um, market to other areas. We're also looking about bringing the U.S. market to Japan. So it's about having that truly global look. Um, we also give a lot of value to our customers because the Japanese market is, is very deep. 
right? Our book there is around 2,000, 2,500 Bitcoin. It's a very deep market. Um, Are they so mostly that, trading yen or, or dollars on, on Bitflyer? That's all yen. That's all yen. So the, all of the, the uh, it, volume as far as our Japanese market is all yen. Obviously, in the U.S., we do U.S. dollars and Europe, we do Euro, euros. Um, but what we want to do is to allow our customers, whether they're in the U.S. or Japan or in Europe, to trade in whatever currency they want to trade and to take advantage of whatever opportunities available because you do see differences between the markets. You have, even in the U.S., if you look at Coinbase and you look at uh, Bitflyer U.S. and you look at you know, Gemini, they're not the same prices that are being shown, right? So there are opportunities for arbitrage for institutional traders as well. So I think it's important to have those links to increase the efficiency of the markets um, overall for uh, increasing the adoption of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies.